In this video, we're going to create some nice damage pop-ups to show how much damage the player dealt. The damage pop-up will have various effects like scaling and fading to make it very satisfying. Let's begin! Hello and welcome, I'm your CodeMonkey and this channel is all about helping you learn how to make your own games with in-depth tutorials made by a professional indie game developer. So if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing. Alright, so this is what we want to create. I have my character here that I can move around and shoot, there are enemies being spawned and what we want is some damage pop-ups when we hit them, exactly like that. It pops out and shows the damage that the enemy took, the damage pop-up then moves away and vanishes, it's different for critical hits and everything looks very great and very satisfying. Okay, so this is the goal, let's get to it. Okay, so to do that, we're going to first create a prefab that we will instantiate when the unit takes damage. So let's make a new empty game object and name this the PF damage pop-up. Let's add the text mesh pro component. Here is our text object. Let's set up to have a nice outline and change the color. Okay, that's our prefab with a nice color, nice outline, and a nice number. As you can see, it's aligned on the left side, on the bottom, with wrapping disabled, and overflow on overflow. Okay, to use this as a prefab, let's drag it into our project folder, and there you go, there's our prefab. Alright, now let's write some code. First, let's make a new c -sharp script. This will be our testing script. Just drag it onto any game object, like that. And let's delete our prefab from our scene. Okay, now let's edit this script. Okay, so in here, let's just test spawning our prefab. So for that, let's do a private void start. And in here, we want to call instantiate to spawn our prefab. Now in here, we need a reference for that prefab. So let's go up here, make a private transform for our PF damage pop-up. Make it a serialized field so we can set it in the editor. So here in the editor, we can now drag our prefab reference. There it is. So now instantiate using our damage pop-up reference. Let's put it on vector 3.0 and put quaternion.identity so it is not rotated. Okay, so let's test and see if our prefab is indeed being instantiated on the 00. And yep, there it is. There's the prefab instantiated on 00. Okay. So now let's make a class to handle our pop-up. So make a new c -sharp script. This will be our damage pop-up. And we're going to drag this script onto our prefab. So let's open the prefab. Here we are on the main damage pop-up and simply drag our script. Okay, now let's open the script. In here, let's start off by making a setup function. So we do a public void setup. Here we will receive the damage value that we will set, so an in for the damage amount. Now we want to set our text, so first we need a reference to the text mesh pro object. So we're going to grab that reference on our private void await. Okay, so we have the reference to our text mesh and we can simply go and set the text to our damage amount. We need to convert into a string and just like that. Okay. So now let's go back into our testing class and in here we instantiate the damage pop-up. Let's grab the reference to that for the damage pop-up. And now we need to grab a reference to the script. So the damage pop-up script is from the transform.get component of type damage pop-up. And then we call our setup function. So right now, let's give it a value of 300. Okay, so let's see if our prefab does indeed say 300. And uh, yep, there it is. The prefab was instantiated on 00, zero and it does say 300. Okay, great. So back in our code here, let's clean this up to make sure that all of this code is contained entirely in the damage pop-up class. So let's make this class responsible for creating the prefab. So in here, let's make a public static. This will return a damage pop-up and let's call this the create function. This will be the function responsible for creating our damage pop-ups. 
So in here, we're going to do exactly what we were doing in here. So let's copy this code. Now in here, the first thing we need is a reference to our prefab. So for that, I'm going to go into the game assets class. So here is that class. This is a class that I use in pretty much all my projects. It allows me to have references to my assets anywhere in my code. It was built in a previous video, so check that out for an in-depth look. But essentially, it's very simple. There's this script with a static instance, and this script is attached to an object in my scene. So in this code, I can add a new field. So in this case, I want a transform for the PF damage pop-up. So I've added the field to this class. Now I can go back in the editor. And here you can see the reference for the damage pop-up. So I can drag my reference. And with this reference set, I can now go back into my script. And here I can grab the reference from that class. So game assets, grab the instance and the damage pop-up. So essentially, this is a very good way to keep one object that holds all my references and be able to access those references anywhere else in my code. So in here, we have the reference for our prefab. And here, let's receive a vector three for the position and an int for the damage amount. So the position is what we're going to use in here to spawn our prefab and the damage amount is what we call on our setup. And just like that, this function is entirely contained in this script. So I can now go back into the testing code. And here I no longer need this reference. All I need in order to instantiate the new pop-up is going to the damage pop-up class and create a new pop-up. So let's put it on vector 3.0 and again, say 300. So let's see if the pop-up is still spawning exactly as previously. And yep, there it is. The pop-up was spawned and it is indeed in there. Okay, great. So our code is now much more clean and much more easy to use. Now, one thing we'd probably want is for the pop-up to always be on top. So if we go into the prefab in here on the text mesh pro component, we can go into the extra settings and here we can sort our sorting layer. So let's create a new sorting layer to put it on top of all the others. Here are the sorting layers and we simply create a new layer. This will be the top layer which will render on top of the default layer. So now we can go back in here and down here, set the sorting layer from default and put it on the top. So since our characters are being rendered on the default layer, this should make sure that our pop-ups are always on top. Let's see. And yep, there it is. There's my character standing behind the pop-up. Okay, great. So with that working, now let's work on making the pop-up move over time. So let's go into the damage pop-up class. And here, let's make our private void update. So in here, we move the pop-up up by going into transform.position and we increase the position by new vector three. We don't move it on the X and we want to move it on the Y. Let's define here a float for the move Y speed. We move it up by that amount and multiply it by time dot delta time. Okay, so this should move our pop-up upwards at a constant speed. Let's test. To make testing better, instead of spawning one on start, let's spawn one every time we click the mouse. So let's make a private void update. Let's check if input not get mouse button down. So when we click on the left mouse button, let's spawn a pop-up on the mouse position. So we go into damage pop-up and we create. Now we need the position. And for that, I can use a function from the code monkey utilities. This function returns the current mouse world position. As always, you can download the utilities for free from untcodemonkey.com. So we pass in the mouse world position and then let's pass in a certain value. So here, let's put just a hundred. Okay. So every time we press the left mouse button, we should be able to see a damage pop-up on the mouse position. And that pop-up will also be moving upwards over time. So let's see. Okay, here we are. Here's my character and if I click, Yep, there you go. There's the pop-up saying the amount and it is indeed going up. So I can shoot and yep, they're all going up and going up non-stop and they never stop. Okay, so far so good. All right. So now obviously we don't want the pop-ups to live forever. So let's make them disappear slowly after some time. So for that, let's define a private float. This will be our disappear timer. So this will store the number of seconds until the pop-up should start disappearing. 
So on our update, let's count down that time. So we reduce it by time dot delta time, okay. And now if it is under zero, then we want to start disappearing. In order to disappear, we're going to modify the text alpha. So for that, we modify the text mesh dot color. So now we need a color object. So for that, let's also store it in here, our private color for the text color. And we're going to grab this color on our setup. So we grab the color based on the text mesh dot color. Okay. So in here, in order to start disappearing, we simply go into the color and we reduce the alpha by a certain amount. So we float for the disappear speed. And we reduce it by the disappear speed multiplied by time dot delta time. And finally, we set the text mesh dot color to this text color. Okay, so now finally all we need is to set the disappear timer, so let's go in here and set it to 1F. So this timer will count down one second. After one second has elapsed, this code will start to run, and this code will start to reduce the text color alpha so as to make the text disappear slowly. So one final thing is to test if the text color alpha is under zero, then that means the pop-up is completely invisible, so we can safely destroy it. All right, that should do it. Let's see. So here we are, and if I click, there's the pop-up going up, and yep, there you go. After one second, it started to vanish, and if I pause the game, there you go, there's no pop-up anywhere to be seen. So again, I can spawn more, and there you go. After a while, they go up, and they do that. Yep, there you go. Okay, great. So with the basic pop-up moving up and vanishing, now let's add a nice difference for critical hits. So on our create function in here, we receive the position, the damage amount, and let's also receive a boolean for is a critical hit. We're going to pass this over to the setup function. Now let's go into the setup function and here a bool for the is critical hit. And now if it is critical, let's increase the font size and set the color to red. So first we set the text mesh dot font size by default, it's going to be at 36, which is what we are currently using. But let's do if it's not a critical hit. So for a normal hit, we set the font size to 36. And for a critical, let's say 45. Let's also set the text color so we can actually define the function in here. So the normal color will be this one, so let's copy this hex code. And here I can use a function from the utils class to get the color from string, and I pass in the hex string, so this is the normal color, a nice yellow. And for the critical hit, let's grab a red color. Okay, this color should be good, so let's copy this code. And here, instead of setting the text color, we set the text mesh to the defined text color. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Now we should have a nice difference for when we get a critical hit. So now let's go into our testing code. And here let's define a bool is critical hit. And let's simply do a random, so. So we're just doing a random chance of 30% to be a critical hit. So just like that, we should be able to test, let's see. Okay, so here we are, now if I click, there you go, there's a normal hit going up and vanishing, and a bunch more hits, and yep, there you go, that was a critical hit. As you can see, the font size is bigger, and it is tinted in red. Okay, great, everything is working so far. Now let's add some more cool effects. So first, let's make the scale increase and then decrease. So here, let's define our maximum for the disappear timer, so we can do a different scale in the first half and in the second half. So we do a private const float for the disappear timer max. And let's use the same that we were using in here. Okay, so now we have the maximum and we know we are counting it down into zero. So for that, we can go into our update. And here, let's check if we're above half of the maximum. So if the disappear timer, if it is bigger than the timer max, multiplied by half, so essentially we're in the first half of the pop-up. And if not, then we are on the second half. 
So on the first half, let's increase the scale and on the second half, decrease it. So on the first half of the pop-up lifetime, we're going to increase the scale and on the second half, we're going to decrease it. So it's going to get bigger and then smaller. Okay, let's see that effect. Okay, here we are, I click and there you go, it gets bigger and then smaller, okay? Now instead of moving up, let's move them up and to the side. So in here, instead of using a float for the move Y speed, let's store a vector three. On setup, let's define that vector. So this vector contains both the direction as well as the speed. And now on update, let's move it by this vector instead of by the move Y speed, okay? And then let's decrease this vector. Okay, so we move our transform by the move vector and then we reduce the move vector on every frame. So I've set the values to make it some nice snappy movement, so let's see. Okay, here we are and when I click, there you go, as you can see it moved to the right, moves quickly at first and then it slows down. Okay, so far our effect is looking great. Now we still have one issue which is, as you can see, sometimes they don't always have the correct sorting. So if I put two, the second one should be on top, but sometimes they don't go. So let's see. For that we just need to make sure that later pop-ups go on top of earlier ones. So we can simply go in here and create a private static int for the sorting order. And on our setup, we increase the sorting order. And then we set the text mesh sorting order to the new sorting order. So every new pop-up will correctly be on top of the earlier ones. So all that's left is to take all of this code and apply it to our player. So here is the player code. Here I'm doing a raycast to see if I hit any enemy. I get the enemy that I hit. Then I calculate the random damage amount and check if it is a critical. So it's in here that we can add our nice damage pop-up by simply going into damage pop-up and create. For the position, let's spawn it on top of the enemy. So the enemy handler has a get position function. Let's pass in the damage amount and is critical. And that's it. As you can see, it's very simple to add this extra effect into already existing code. Now let's remove our testing code and test out the player shooting enemies. Okay, here's the player moving around and if I shoot into nothing, nothing happens and I shoot the enemy. And yep, there you go, there's a nice damage pop-up showing how much damage that enemy took. And there you go, and the effect looks very nice, very satisfying, and everything works exactly as intended. I can shoot the enemies and yep, everything looks great. We got critical hits, we got random damage, and yep, it all looks great. So there you have it, we created some very nice damage pop-ups that we can easily add into our game. The various effects of moving the pop-up, changing the scale and making it disappear make the whole effect look great. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. If you liked the video, subscribe to the channel for more Unity tutorials. Post any questions you have in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Alright, see you next time!